Good afternoon, everybody. It is the 15th of January, 2020. I've almost said 2019. I still can't believe it's 2020. Um, I just wanted to get on here today and just say hello because I haven't been on for a while. And I just wanted to kind of tell you what's going on with me. Uh, nothing really spectacular. Just uh, I haven't gone anywhere. I've just been extremely distracted and busy. Uh, I'm a school teacher. I teach at a Christian school. Uh, I, I'm actually a drama teacher. Um, <clears throat> I also, this semester, am teaching a Bible class to high school. And that leads me to a prayer request. Would you please pray for me when, if the Lord leads, you know, um, teaching Bible in a Christian school is not easy uh, because it tends to be, um, you know, it's a requirement and you get a grade for it and it can be just something that everybody has to do. And the kids in the class, they're, they're great kids, they really are, but they come from all kinds of backgrounds. And I don't want to, I need discernment on what they need to hear. The textbook that we're using, it's not really text, it's, it's a three ring binder, but <clears throat> it is on the book of Proverbs, which is, it's good. I mean, Proverbs is wisdom, but the, the approach could very easily be, you know, this is what you need to do, do this, do this, do this, do this, you know, and everything's fine. And I want them so much to understand that I want them to understand the gospel of grace. I want them to understand what Jesus did when he came. I want them to really understand this. And granted, a lot of them come from where a lot of us came from, where, um, you know, they, a lot of legalism, legalism in different levels or whatever. And... I am not kidding myself in thinking that I can do this. This got to be the Holy Spirit leading me and speaking through me and moving in them. And, and also, I just really don't want to, this would sound really ridiculous, but it can be intimidating. Um, you know, I don't want to be distracted or, uh, disoriented by their faces because faces don't tell you everything. There can be a lot of things going on in there and um, they can look dead in the morning or disinterested when it's really because maybe they're thinking about something else that's really bothering them or whatever. And I know all these, the kids all know who I am. I have 15 of them and I just, I, I'm asking you to pray for me that the Lord will meet their need, that the Lord will meet each one of them on what they need from him, and that I will have the sensitivity to teach them the truth and to love them more than anything, that they will know the love of Jesus through me. Uh, I tend to be very um, practical and tell you the way it is, and um, but at the same time, for some of them, they're not comfortable. I'm also very touchy, like a touchy feely, you know, I like to hug and all that stuff. And then there are those that don't like that. So, um, anyway, that's just what I ask. I'm asking some of you to pray for me about. Um, the other thing is that I, uh, this whole month has been crazy because I took my youngest to college and he is starting out and I really miss him a lot. And I haven't had a chance to really know what it's like to be. I mean, this is the empty nest. I have eight kids, and this is the last one, and it's just really weird. Um, and then the other thing is a very dear friend. I used to be a missionary kid in Nigeria when I was, we went when I was five. And one of the very first people that I ever met there was a lady who um, really became part of our family. And she died on January 12th which was her 97th birthday. And so 
I'm going, I'm going to take a trip. I'm going to drive by myself from Texas up to Tennessee at my sister's house, and then from there go to Kentucky for her funeral. And I have not seen my sister, and I mean, all my siblings except one will be there, and um, we're all, we have a good relationship and everything. I just haven't seen them since I came back from overseas, which was about three years ago. And so, in a way, this has given me an opportunity to do that. <clears throat> but um, I will be leaving Saturday morning, driving by myself, and um, coming back on Tuesday. So, this is kind of a personal, like, here I am, please pray for me kind of thing. Um, but anyway, that's where I've been, and I've just been very, uh, then uh, my best friend's mom, she's had some trouble, and I've had to be with her. Um, so it's just been uh, kind of crazy since January started, and I haven't been able to settle down or really think through anything. But I have uh, been on, and, and I've, um, you know, the battle still rages, and I just want to say that even though, as a, as, as a child, my parents taught me the gospel, the true gospel and of grace, there's always been a little tinge, a little struggle of, you know, that little legalism thing has, you know, I've dealt with through my life. But, boy, I tell you, this last year, it has been so crystal clear to me what Jesus did and how free we are and how secure we are and how simple it is. As I've said before, Jesus said you have to be like a little child. And we just love to complicate it. Our flesh just wants, wants credit or something. We may not think we want credit, but we do. And Jesus said, you know, let the little children come to me. And, you know, as far as he's concerned... I'm a little child, and I'm really glad. I am so glad that I can be that to him because there's so many things that I just don't know how to do. I just don't. I don't know how to live life. I don't know what to do when I'm in trouble. I need to know my shepherd is a shepherd to me because I'm a stupid sheep most of the time, and and he's patient with me, and he loves me, and he knows everything before I ever say it or do it. As it says in Psalm 139, he knows the word I'm going to speak before I even speak it, before I even know I'm going to say it. And I was thinking about, I don't even know how to put this into words. I know we knew, you, we use the acronym OA, oh, OSA, let's see. Once saved, always saved. You know, O-S-A-S. -S. Okay, I always think of Oasis when I see that. But, And I have to be honest, I don't really like that acronym. I don't like using an acronym like it's, a, like it's some sort of uh, sticker you put on you. You know, we love acronyms as Americans. We love having those little letters and, you know, have this abbreviation. And I have to admit, I don't, I don't really like it because I don't like it to be like a label. Or to just label something. But I was thinking about it. And I was thinking about the 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 argument, oh, yes, you can lose your salvation, which is totally ridiculous. For one thing, those that believe that or say that, there are so many ways. Everybody, most of you that, that um, teach the, the true gospel, you've already covered all that stuff. But I was thinking of the... The fact that first it's arrogant, first it it just it it does this to Jesus. I mean it does. It it says that he is not all powerful, that he's not able. And um but the other thing is is that what they fail to talk about is that okay, if you've lost your salvation, can you get it back? Well, according to Hebrews now, it's not talking about a saved person, but let's say that they look at it. They go to Hebrews a lot, talking about, um, you know, the person who has tasted it and been enlightened, and that if he rejects it, then, you know, he can't be brought back. All right, so if you lose your salvation, then 
if they're going to use that scripture, which is not what the scripture means, it is it they're taking it out of context, but if that's what that scripture means, according to them, if they're you know they're saying, saying that, then you can't be saved again because you've trampled under you've trampled the the blood of Jesus, you've trampled him underfoot, and they fail to talk about that. Um, <clears throat> so why even bother? The other thing that I think about is, um, if you're if you're basing your if you're really basing it on what you can do to maintain your salvation, um, oh, I don't even want to go there. It's so ridiculous. Your forgiveness and salvation is not based on your being sorry enough. It is based on Jesus blood in his sacrifice period and um he tasted death for everyone everyone the whole world so as i've said before we do not have a sin problem we have a jesus problem and we are to believe on him period so i'm just going to say that again um it says in Hebrews 2, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The Lord is my salvation. How are we going to escape if we neglect so great, so great a salvation? It is a great salvation. It is an all-encompassing salvation. It is to the uttermost. And God uses words that we understand. And words mean something. He didn't use words that we just sort of, oh, well, he didn't really mean that. He knows we're stupid. I mean, well, he doesn't look at us that way in a bad sort of way. You know what I mean? But he knows that we're simple people. We may think we're not. We're so smart. And those are the people who get in trouble. So it's so great a salvation because it's so complete Anyway, I'm just rambling. Um, you guys that are standing there in the fight that are, you know, constantly putting out things. I am <clears throat> very grateful that you are because I really don't have the time and half the time I'm, I don't even know what to say. Some of the stuff out there is so ridiculous. It's like, why even bother? And I have honestly thought about, you know, Sometimes I I wonder if I should even watch anything and just put out whatever I feel like the Lord wants me to say and just not even worry with it. But honestly, all the junk and all the lies and all the hate and all the deception, maybe we ought to just don't watch it. It just brings you down. I tell you, when I watch some of it, my blood pressure or my, my pulse goes up. I just, it's just so ridiculous. And, and a lot of you are saying that a lot of you are saying we need to just support each other, pray for each other. Um, we don't overlook sin, you know, but Jesus paid for it and we get up and keep going and keeping our eyes on Jesus. So anyway, I'm rambling. Just, uh, keep me in prayer if you think about it. And, um, Blessings on you.